Hey there folks, uh, today I'm going to record a video supplement to my written photo review on the fantastic LumTech M27 Tungsten Automatic. Now the work that I do as a watch reviewer can sometimes be very hazardous. Uh, I'll call it uh, occupational hazard if you will. Uh, sometimes watch companies will send me watches with the intention of my photographing and reviewing them and with the idea of me sending the watches back after I'm done. But because I like watches, uh, in, in some cases, it's a one-way trip for these watches and I end up uh, going ahead and buying them. Uh, and this is one of those cases. Uh, I, I just really uh, like this M27. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing. First thing I'll point out is the uh, LumTech Certificate of Authenticity. This tends to come with all of their watches. Uh, you can see it's the M27. It's a uh, serial number 49 of 100. It is a limited edition model uh, with a production date of November 16th, 2010. And it does have the uh, ETA 28932 movement. And of course, it's signed by the president of LumTech. Real nice touch. And inside, we have a very nice wooden box. I'll go ahead and take that out. Okay, so I've taken the uh, wooden inner box out uh, from the white outer cardboard box. And it's a very nice uh, wood box with a high gloss polyurethane coating. Uh, very nice, uh, would certainly look good on, uh, on a dresser. It's a very nice presentation box. And inside we have the M27. And I've got the watch on uh, the, the included black rubber, rubber strap that signed LumTech. Nice buckle there. We're going to set that off to the side for the time being. Um, comes has some two side compartments. <clears throat> you'll, you'll see some photos in my uh, written review of the watch on the leather strap. A uh, very nice strap. Another LumTech buckle. Uh, this strap does have uh, quick release pins, which are real nice. Uh, just a little uh, latch there that you can easily uh, pull the uh, pin back and, and remove those from the lugs. <coughs> so it's well padded, it's comfortable, very, very nice, uh, very nice strap. Now it also comes with uh, a metal bracelet that is tungsten carbide, like the case is. Uh, it's really a well-made, well-constructed bracelet. Signed LumTech. It's got a two button release. Uh, very nice clasp. I believe the clasp is stainless steel. It's stamped that. And it's got some nice uh, perlage here on the interior of it. Uh, I've seen that sort of thing before from some other manufacturers. Very nice. Uh, very well constructed. Uh, <laughs> but I can't get the bracelet on, on the watch. I tried. Uh, it's certainly no fault of LumTech or the the design of the the watch or the bracelet. Um, these uh, these end links are solid, solid end links, and those are just a real challenge to try to to get into a, a watch. Uh, and I had just a heck of a time, so I haven't put the bracelet on. It's very heavy, very nice bracelet. I quite honestly, I think I would prefer the watch with one of the straps. So it's, it's no big loss for me there. Uh, I may wrestle with it again another time and, and try to get that on just so I can see what it looks like. But very nice bracelet. Uh, I just can't get the silly thing on. So there's uh, there's the there's the package of what's included with the LumTech M27. Okay, so here's some close-up footage of the actual watch, the LumTech M27. The case is made of uh, tungsten carbide and uh, it's pretty heavy. 
it's heavier than most stainless steel watches. Um, tungsten carbide is apparently pretty dense. Uh, and I like it. I like a heavy watch. Uh, I would imagine with that bracelet on there, uh, that is going to be impressively heavy. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's got a black dial. Uh, really love the red accents on there. Uh, it has the, uh, the fourth hand, the GMT hand, for tracking a second time zone. Uh, really like that feature. The tungsten carbide is highly, highly scratch resistant. Uh, really amazing material. Um, I'm surprised more watchmakers aren't using uh, using this. I see a lot of titanium watches, and titanium, in most cases, is not an attractive metal to to make a watch from. Uh, it tends to have uh, a yellowish uh, kind of a, a hue to it that I think ruins a lot of watches. Uh, but tungsten carbide, wow. Uh, really, really impressive stuff. I wrestled with that watch for about an hour trying to get the bracelet on and I expected that the interior of the lugs were going to be really scratched up but I can't find any scratches. It's <laughs> and the material is very slick. I mean it's uh, it's no wonder that you can't scratch it because anything just slides right off of it. It's, it's a very slick material. Uh, so it's uh, uh, really, really neat. Uh, with the rubber strap that I have on there, uh, it's going to be just a wonderful watch to uh, uh, to wear and, and not worry about getting it scratched up or damaged. Uh, and even even with that polish that it on there, uh, most polished watches tend to uh, show scratches more readily. But uh, you know, I'm not saying you can't, absolutely can't scratch it, but I uh, I'm really impressed at the durab durability of, uh, of that tungsten carbide. Um, here's the back of the watch. Um, I believe the case back is actually stainless steel. Um, here's the another shot of the strap here with the Loomtech signed buckle. It is a larger watch at uh, 44 millimeters. And I'm typically not a fan of, of watches that are that big. Uh, most of the watches I wear are Rolexes and are around 40 millimeters. So this is considerably larger than what I usually wear. It has kind of what I'll call a Panerai-like look to it. Uh, I wouldn't call it a, a, a homage, uh, homage watch. Uh, you know, it's it's significantly different, but it's it's got that larger hockey puck look, kind of like a Panerai or... Uh, some other watches in that same vein, and uh, uh, I, I like it. It's it's very different from what I typically wear. You know, it's uh, it's I'm I'm really impressed with it. Again, I I just I, I told Chris send me one to review and and be prepared that it may not come back because I'd been I had my eye on it. Some a couple of the other guys uh, on Watch Talk forums like Watch Fan wanted had uh, pick, picked one up and really like it. I'm, I'm a sucker for a GMT. Uh, love the red accents on the dial. Uh, I've got another strap coming, another rubber strap that's got some uh, some red stitching in it that I think is going to look really good. So uh, I think it's going to be a fun watch for me this summer. Uh, in terms of uh, you know things I don't like about it, uh, no watch is perfect and there are, are some things I don't. Uh, that crystal the sapphire crystal is AR coated and a reflective coated on both sides, which I always think is a mistake. Uh, I typically prefer to see a sapphire crystal coated on the under underside of the crystal. Uh, the reason why manufacturers use sapphire for crystals is because of its scratch resistance. However, when you coat it, uh, the the surface of the sapphire with a coating like an AR coating that coating will scratch and over time you'll see streaks on the crystal in certain light from uh, from scratches that have happened uh, to that uh, AR coating. So it, it, it really doesn't make sense to me why you'd use a, a sapphire crystal and then coat it with something that can show scratches. Uh, the other problem here, I'm going to see if I can if I can demonstrate here, when you hold this in certain lights 
you get a really bad blue kind of magenta hue on the dial. Uh, I showed this in some of the pictures in my uh, photo review. Uh, you know, if you just hold it at certain angles, you're going to get that. Uh, you're going to get that glare, which completely changes the color characteristics of the dial, and I don't like that. That bugs me. I've seen that on so many other watches, um, and that's a personal pet peeve. Uh, some people, I guess, like uh, a double AR coating uh, because they they feel it gives better visibility to the dial. You know, I, again, I think it's a mistake. And you know, a couple of my friends who have gotten these have already. Uh, been able to remove the coating from from the surface of the crystal, and that's something that I'm going to be doing as well. Um, but other than that, really like the watch. Um, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, just wanted to give you some video footage of this watch. Um, you know, it's 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 a fantastic watch. One of the things I really like it. I just want to mention the fact is it's it's for as big of a watch as it is, it's fairly thin. Uh, it will still fit under uh, uh, the cuff of a long sleeve shirt and a lot of your larger watches that are over we'll say 42 millimeters uh, tend to be real thick and chunky too and, and you know you can only wear them with certain uh, certain items of wardrobe but this one's very versatile and that's something I really appreciated so thanks Loom Tech really uh, Chris really appreciate you sending me this watch uh, don't send any more. I can't afford this. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm very happy with this, my first my first Loom Tech. Uh, and I am uh, planning on getting one of the new V1s that, uh, uh, that is in pre-production right now and, and available for pre-order. So look for a review of the V1 here in the next couple, three months, uh, whenever uh, Chris gets that one out the door. Uh, until then... We'll see you in the official Loom Tech forum on Watch Talk forums. Take care. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.